and welcome back to the negative space so today we're going to be talking about suicide we're going to be talking about the suicide of kate spade and anthony bourdain my own personal experiences and kind of the message i want to spread right now and always uh, particularly since it's so relevant in the media so unfortunately within a week Kate Spade, who was the influential, incredibly successful fashion designer, and Anthony Bourdain, who is the incredibly successful documentarian, uh, TV personality, both um, allegedly, apparently, have committed suicide. And when situations like this happen, it really does show that no matter how successful you are, no matter how much money you have, no matter where you are at in life, depression is a very real thing. And it doesn't know age, race, gender, socioeconomic status. It, it doesn't know any of those bounds. While we're mourning the loss of these two individuals right now, I thought it was an appropriate time to spread the message that you're not alone, that you're going to be okay, there are resources out there for you. Struggling with depression myself, I have had some suicidal thoughts, and this is what I want to get to about um, the suicide hotline. It can seem almost impersonal, and reaching out really is the hardest thing to do. And. I understand, like, before I had ever called the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, I was just kind of like, okay, I'm not going, like, how could this possibly help me? Like, I know that sounds really pessimistic, but I'm like, okay, I'm going to call somebody on the phone and, like, I'm just going to, like, talk to this random person. But honestly, when you call the lifeline, when you reach out, and I believe there's even text message options and things like that too, you're talking to somebody who might not understand your particular situation, but they understand how to listen. They understand how to talk to you. And when you're feeling so isolated and so alone, you need that more than ever. I know that calling a stranger might seem a little impersonal, but we watch strangers on the internet <laughs> You know, we interact with strangers on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube. I'm a virtual stranger to most of you. <laughs> There's still that interaction there. So I guess from my perspective, I would say it's really not that strange. And being able to talk to somebody who knows how to talk to you back, who can actually just listen to you, it means so much more and it's so much more rewarding than I think people anticipate that it is. So again, please reach out. Reach out to your family, reach out to your friends and get to a place of safety. Call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. I will leave that all down below. I felt validated and what I was feeling was real because sometimes when you reach out to family members or friends, which I still urge you to do, but sometimes when you reach out to family and friends, who don't experience something like that or who aren't trained in how that manifests how suicide manifests itself if that makes sense like the Suez national suicide uh prevention lifeline workers they're trained in how to analyze what you're saying and they're obviously very familiar with people who are talking about suicide and they're they're trained to deal with that and sometimes reaching out to family or friends they can inadvertently say something that makes you feel less validated that makes you feel worse unintentionally of course and sometimes family and friends they say things out of their own fear because they don't want you to take your life in the past when i've been suicidal i've had um family members say to me like oh well what do you have in your life that's so bad that you would just end it like what is so bad or as soon as i would mention something about that it would be no don't do that don't say that don't do that and it's kind of like okay well i need to talk about this but out of their own fear and out of 
they don't know how to handle that situation. Obviously, it's a difficult situation. You know, when somebody's coming to you saying like, I think I'm gonna kill myself, I want to kill myself. It's hard to react to that because you have that own fear in your heart. So if you have reached out to a family member or friend and they've given you a response that kind of shut down the conversation, please just understand that it's not coming from a bad place at all. It's coming from the fear in their own hearts. So please, I cannot say it enough, no matter how hopeless you feel, suicide is a permanent solution to what is a temporary problem. Because believe it or not, and I'm speaking from a place of experience here, and I'm treated for my depression, but just because you know, I, I take medication, I constantly have to have it reevaluated. And sometimes, you know, certain trigger, like life, life events can trigger a depressive episode, whether you're on, you know, medication or not, and it needs to be adjusted. And that is a constant struggle in and of itself. Because I can be on this, you know, my experience is I was on this medication that treated my social anxiety disorder, my depression, and I felt like it helped me so much. It absolutely changed my life. And then December, like November, December came around and I just started slipping back in, even though nothing changed with my medication. But there are certain life events. Sometimes your medication needs to be adjusted. There are so many factors. And I don't think we know all of the factors that contribute to it. I fell into this depression and I'm still in it. I'm hopeful, but some days are a little better than others and some days are worse. I know how isolating and lonely it is when you feel like an outsider in your own life. Oh, that's my experience anyway. There are steps to take and I know that taking those steps, especially when you're depressed, it, it seems counterintuitive, but sometimes you're almost like, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> I just don't want to. I just wanna sit here because it hurts to literally do anything else. And that is the absolute hardest part. <laughs> but if you are in crisis, there are resources out there for you and it's easy it's easy to do that okay getting treatment getting professional treatment getting therapeutic treatment that's essential but also having a strong support group in your personal life is important too and it's a process it really sucks <laughs> i'm not gonna lie to you i'm in it right now and this is something I've dealt with my whole life and it has been so crippling and so hard for me and it's hard to talk about it because especially with like close family members and friends because these are people that love you they don't want to hear you say stuff like this but when we talk about suicide awareness it's not just hey suicide happens <laughs> that's not what it's about it's suicide awareness. It's about saying there are resources if you're feeling suicidal and what you're feeling is it's a real thing and you don't have to take this ultimate step for something that is preventable. Whether it's your family or friends or it's the suicide lifeline or it's your psychiatrist or it's your therapist or if you're admitted into the hospital, the psychiatric ward for these feelings, you have a safe environment that you can talk to somebody. There are certain, I'm going to try to link a website down below, or at least a few. Um, and again, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a doctor by any sense of the word but there are certain ways that you can talk to a suicidal person that will encourage the conversation and make them feel a little bit more safe. So I'm going to go ahead and link that down below. All right, so I hope that <laughs> this ramble has made sense. I just want to express my sincere condolences to the family and friends of Kate Spade and Anthony Bourdain because 
this world is lost to very great, influential, and inspiring people, and it's a sad day. So here I want to give a few updates uh, about my channel, about what's going on with me. So <sighs> I've addressed this in a vlog that I never posted, <laughs> but this is definitely going to be the video that I post next. So I'm going to edit this today. Hopefully I have it posted tomorrow because I can't use the internet at my own house. <laughs> So I'll have to go to Starbucks or a friend's house or something like that. Like I said, I've been in a lot of pain, both mentally, emotionally, and physically. So I really haven't been, <sighs> I've been feeling very apathetic and I want that desperately to change. And I do have some vlogs just talking about the past couple months of my life because I filmed, I just haven't edited it and uploaded it because I just haven't had the mental, emotional, or physical energy to. And I want that to change because this channel is important to me. My website, my the content I create is really important to me. Um, and I feel this guilt about not putting it out as often as I want to. And I want that to change. I'm not gonna sit here and make an upload schedule because like, I don't know. I don't know how I'm gonna feel tomorrow. And I have filmed some like happy, like fun things. Um, I went to the Winchester Mystery House and vlogged a little bit of that, took some pictures. My friend, my wonderful friend Cheyenne took me and I'm so grateful. Basically from this point forward, uh, this is gonna be the video that I put up first. And then I'm gonna have some vlogs edited. So it's gonna be like past, stuff that's happened to me so it's definitely not going to be present by any sense of the means at least for probably like um, a couple weeks but hopefully i can get caught up on that and i do have a couple video i guess i'll call them stand-up videos because it's much easier for me to talk i guess standing than it is sitting down for some reason i don't know why that is i wanted to talk about what a typical day is like in a psychiatric ward or mental hospital because if you're in that situation either you or a loved one is going in there it can be a little uh scary i'm hoping that this is a step in the right direction for me and for this channel and for uh just trying to make this world a better place in my own right. So with that being said, I have a link down to my website down below, all the crisis, suicide prevention lifelines, I will also have below. I'll try to find a link to that website about talking to like um, a person who may be in crisis, I'll link that below, as long as I can, <clears throat> excuse me, find it. And with all that being said, Thank you so much for watching. You're not alone. You're going to be okay. And I'll see you next time.